Hey, I'm Chris, and I just wanted to walk you through the uh, use and uh, setup of the MIDI Visualizer software. So I'll start out by just opening up the uh, settings.config file here. Um, this is the basic way that we set up all of the different settings uh, for the software. Uh, basically, all of the user settings are controlled through here. So I'll just explain what each one of these does and how it uh, impacts the software. So first we'll look at the output settings. What the output settings do is control how the software outputs the uh, images and uh, um, the data that it generates. So the first thing we have here is deck link output. This controls whether or not the uh, generated image should be sent to a uh, Blackmagic deck link card, which is what I designed this for when we used it, uh, I needed SDI video output, so I used that. Now, whether or not you use that's up to you. It's not uh, necessary. It just was uh, what we needed for our situation. If you're fine with just using a scan converter or the monitor out on your computer, that works just great. So, uh, this if the value on this is 1, it's on, 0, it's off, that holds true for um, all of the true-false uh, settings on here. So the other output uh, setting is monitor output. Um, if you have that on, it will display what it builds on your screen. Output width and output height are the uh, size that it's building the image at. It's going to stretch the image to be full screen regardless, but the uh, closer this is to the actual resolution that you're outputting, the better you're going to be. Uh, next we have MIDI input. So this is controlling the MIDI channels coming into each uh, of the... When we used it, it was four uh, drum triggers. So we have MIDI input A, B, C, and D. Those just get mapped to a MIDI value right here. A uh, MIDI channel value, rather. Uh, and then we have the MIDI advancement trigger. And what this does is it advances between the uh, first and second mode that the software does. Um, the first mode is a demo mode where you can just kind of hit whatever you want to do uh, play whatever MIDI channel you want to play and it just shows a uh, representation of it on screen. Um, to move from that into the next section uh, which would either be the text uh, section or the painting section you need to have uh, a MIDI channel mapped to change to that section. So you do that right here. Just same thing. MIDI channel gets set on that. Next section is DMX output. So this is controlling what DMX channel uh, should be mapped to each one of the four uh, MIDI inputs. So when a MIDI input is triggered, it also triggers a DMX output. So real simple, you just set uh, the value here for the DMX channel between uh, 0 and 511. Um, it only supports one universe of DMX, uh, so that hopefully will be enough. If it's not, uh, it could be adjusted through the source code if you um, have the ability to edit that. Uh, the preheat value is a value that the lights just sit at when they're not on. What this does is for uh, normal conventional lighting fixtures, it takes a, a little bit for them to go from 0 to 100 percent intensity. So this is just a percentage right now, this is 0 0.1, so it's 10 percent of its maximum intensity. Uh, and that just allows it to get from its low value to its high value faster. Uh, the next settings we have right here are the parameters for the demo mode. Uh, this is just turning demo mode on or off, 0 off, 1 on, so we've just got it on. Um, then we've got the parameters for the text mode. Same thing, text mode on, text mode off. We also have uh, a text file that we uh, set here, and this is where it pulls the text information from. This can be anywhere on your hard drive, uh, or if you don't, like if this was on our C drive, it would just be C colon 
backslash demo text. If it's in the application directory, um, the same directory that the uh, executable is in, then it can just be the name of the file. Uh, then we have the font name that it uses when it builds the text, uh, and then we have the dead zone time. And what this is, is it's a amount of time that's given with each um, each MIDI signal that it receives in this section. So say when we were doing the, the drum uh, setup with it, it allowed us to do several different drum hits within um, a certain amount of time before changing to the next one. So if if this is set to zero, what is going to happen is you're going to hit the, say if you're doing drums, you'll hit one drum and the next drum you hit will they'll both advance text. If it's set to a longer time, you could get a couple of hits in um, before it advances. Uh, it just was a necessary thing to pull off what we were wanting to do. Whether it's useful for you, uh, I don't know. Uh, if it's not, turn it off. Next one we have here is the painting mode. So uh, if you have this on, it just will do the um, circle painting uh, and build in the image or image or series of images that you provide to it. Um, so grid size is kind of the the resolution at which it um, is going to sample the images that you pull in. So if you have this set to one, what it's doing is it's looking at every single pixel in the image. Um, if you have it set to four, it's looking at every fourth pixel, and um, so on and so forth. The uh, lower that number is, the harder your computer is going to have to work to make this happen. So the next setting we have here is brightness threshold. What this does is it controls the minimum brightness of a pixel uh, that it will use. So if you have a pixel that's completely black, it just gets discarded. Uh, because the background's black and so it just doesn't need to be there um, unless it's like you really want it to be there and that and in that situation just set your brightness threshold to be zero and it would show everything um, this is a basically um, a value between zero and 255 so um, anywhere between those levels, anything above that brightness will show up, anything below it just gets discarded. Uh, circle size modifier will uh, just give you some control over the size of the circles that are spawned. Uh, this lets you tweak things a little bit to get uh, your images to fill in properly at different resolutions, at different sizes. Uh, you just kind of have to play with this to get it right. And then circles per hit is how many circles get spawned with every uh, MIDI input that it receives. So uh, this is very useful in tuning your uh, your image building so that it lasts the appropriate length. Uh, you just kind of have to come in here and tweak this until you get the right number of pixels for the number of uh, beats or notes that are being hit with whatever your performance is. Um, and then we have image layers here, and what this is, is it allows us to uh, set what layers we want um, the, the paint mode to build in. So this can be however many images you want. Right now I've got it set up with three. It's got a background layer, a mid layer, and a foreground layer. Uh, it builds in the background layer. As soon as it's done with that, it advances to the mid layer and just piles the circles on top of the previous layer um, and then does the foreground layer after that and it just keeps going until it runs out of images to work with. Uh, the, the final section we have down here is the debug section. Uh, what auto build does is it just automatically fills in the image. It just basically generates random MIDI hits and um, builds the image as it goes and then generate mouse hits. Uh, what this does is makes it so that when you click with the left mouse button it generates a random um, 
MIDI hit, and when you click with the right mouse button, it uh, does the MIDI advancement trigger to move on to the next section. So I'm just going to go ahead and fire up the, uh, the software here, and um, you see when I start this up, it's going to come up with two errors, because A, I don't have a MIDI device plugged into this computer right now, and B, I don't have the DMX output device plugged in, but it keeps uh, keeps on going, life is good, it just isn't going to output um, DMX or input MIDI. Uh, as you saw there, Alt F4 closes this program once you have it started. Uh, it just runs full screen other than that. So I'm just going to start clicking here. Um, and you see in demo mode, it's just generating these random uh, MIDI hits, the random circles based on the positioning that um, is determined for section A, B, C, and D. So I'll advance to the next section by right clicking. Uh, this is just going to step through text here, um, and there we go. And then uh, we are now in the painting section, so as I click here, it's just going to generate uh, the image here. So I'm just going to click through this real quick here. In fact, um, I will just pause this and I'll uh, come back when the whole thing's built so you guys don't have to sit through this whole thing. Alright, well there we go. The image is built in. Basically that's all there is to the software. Uh, if you have any questions feel free to post comments or uh, send me an email and uh, I'd love to help you out however I can. I hope you get some use out of this.